Wonderful. Thank you very much, Chair. You are now live. Thank you very much. So good morning, uh, members and officers and any members of the public who are viewing this live stream of this meeting. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the South Cambridgeshire District Council Cabinet from my kitchen, as you can see. Um, my name is Councillor Bridget Smith and I'm the leader of South Cambridgeshire District Council and I'm chair of the Cabinet. For the information of members of the public, the Cabinet, which is made up of myself and eight lead Cabinet members, is responsible for most Council services, for preparing the budget and the Council's major policies and strategies, uh, which are then considered by full Council. Now, this is the fourth virtual meeting of Cabinet, so bear with us if we have any technical issues, but actually I think we are getting better at this. Famous last words. Uh, so first, just a few housekeeping announcements. Um, please, would you make sure that your device is fully charged and that your microphones are on mute unless you are invited to speak? And when you are invited to speak, please unmute your microphone. And when you finish speaking, please turn your microphone off straight away. Speak slowly and clearly and please don't talk over or interrupt anybody or it just gets really difficult. And then please switch off or silence any other devices that you have, which just reminds me to switch off my own phone um, so they don't interrupt the proceedings. So the normal procedure at Cabinet is to take votes by affirmation and we will continue with this tradition. Uh, and when we move to a vote on any item, I'll ask if members agree with the proposal. And if any member wants to either vote against a proposal or abstain, then a roll call will be taken. And they'll, I'll then ask cabinet members to speak into their microphones so their vote is clear both to the cabinet and to those watching this webcast. A member should respond for, against or abstain when their name is called. So there's business on the agen this agenda which is confidential um, and this is referred to as exempt business. Uh, and if the committee agrees to exclude the press and public at item uh, 12 or 12 or possibly 13, uh, the live video stream will end and then I'll let members of the public know when this is about to happen. And things that are confidential, it's usually because of commercial sensitivity.
OK, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, the technical issue should now be resolved and you are live again. Uh, so welcome back after that short, short interlude. Um, I hope people have used it to go and grab a cup of coffee. Uh, so we were just on the actions taken under the chief executive delegated powers, which have been implemented during the coronavirus. Uh, regulations. Uh, members, you're asked to note the report. Does anybody have any questions on the report? Uh, Aizen, Councillor Van der Waer, are there any questions coming through on the chat? No, there are no questions. Nope. OK, so we note, so we note the report. Uh, so moving on to item seven, which is issues arising from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Uh, Councillor Chamberlain, uh, would you like to um, introduce this report? Um, and let me know if you'd like to speak before any of the items. Thank you very much, uh, Leader. Um, just to add a couple of things, if I may, to the report, um, notably under the Scrutiny Improvement Review section, uh, I'm pleased to confirm that we have established dates for our triangulation meeting on the 21st of September. That will include um, just a small number of us, um, but an all member workshop has also been agreed and established for the 30th of September. That will be organised by CFPS uh, and I promise this to be a very, very interesting session, I'm sure. Other than that, I think Victoria has done a great job in summarising our meeting uh, and I'm more than happy to, uh, to put, move that forward to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. So members, you're asked to note the report from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Thank you very much. So moving on to the first uh, major item on the agenda, which is the 2020 to 2021 uh, quarter one performance report. Um, and I'm just going to introduce this item, which appears at uh, page 15 on your agenda. Now, obviously, life has been pretty nuts uh, for the first quarter of this this year. Um, so if you if you look at the appendix, um, appendix B, which is the business plan action update report, you'll see a very frank um, resume of the impact that the COVID pandemic has had on our bus business plan. And there's there's very little that hasn't been been impacted. But I think we I think officers have done a very good job in giving a full explanation about things that haven't been able to happen as fast or haven't been able to happen at all. Because quite rightly, as the District Council, we have mobilised all our actions into um, dealing with the pandemic, supporting vulnerable people, getting, I think, over £25 million worth of grants out to businesses, uh, feeding hundreds of people in South Cambridgeshire on a, on a weekly basis. So all the stuff that went to the top of our list of priorities uh, because of COVID. So it's hard, it's not surprising that it's impacted on delivery of our business plan. However, what I am pleasantly surprised by is when we look at our performance, it, it really has not impacted on very much of our performance at all. In fact, I think performance has held up remarkably well. And there are some areas where, uh, you know, we're seeing um, things in the red, things like um, early on housing rent collection went down, but now that's back, that's back in the green. Not surprisingly, the amount that's spent on bed and breakfast accommodation has, uh, you know, has gone up significantly, but quite rightly, we can't leave homeless people without homes during a pandemic. Uh, so, you know, we have had to deal with that uh, willingly in exactly the same way as all councils have. Uh, there's been a slowdown in reletting housing stock because we haven't been able to go into houses. Um, our contractors haven't been able to put in new kitchens and paint walls and things like that. Uh, but this is all stuff that's getting getting going again. And in some cases, actually, our performance has increased. Um, and that is down to the extraordinary efforts of our executive management team in making sure that our workforce were well supported to work at home, that they had all the kit they needed. They had chairs that didn't give them bad backs. They had extra screens and lots and lots of effort from um, our HR department to make sure that people's health and well-being was well looked after. Because, you know, even though some people love working at home and we're getting lots of feedback that people have 
valued not having to commute into work and they valued the amount of time that they've they've been able to spend with their families. There have been negatives and particularly people trying to balance caring responsibilities or people you know, without um, sufficient office space in their homes, which makes life stressful. But we have done way more than what, you know, many, many other councils in making sure that we've been caring for uh, particularly the mental health of our staff. So, you know, my my thanks and congratulations go to all of our executive management team and in, in particular to uh, Liz Watts, our chief executive. Uh, and I think that's why we've actually fared very, very well, because we've looked after the people who are actually doing the work and are having to keep keep the show on the road, which they have had to do. Uh, so if there are any questions on this item, I'm happy to uh, do my. So, Aidan, do we have any questions? No, no. no? Okay, okay, good. Um, so, uh, the Cabinet's recommended to uh, review the KPI results and comments at Appendix A and progress against the business plan um, actions at Appendix B. Apologize, apologize, uh, uh, leader, um, Councillor De Lacey is asked to speak on this item. Oh, right. So, Councillor De Lacey, you're, I'll stop and you can come in. Thank you very much indeed, leader. Um, you will know at previous meetings I have made a heartfelt plea for more information than just an average. And I'm very pleased to report that I've spoken both to Peter Maddock and Jeff Membry, and they are working on a plan which should provide us with a great deal more information on performance indicators in the future. Uh, and I'm delighted to report that. But I'm slightly surprised looking at my Bête Noir, the contact centre, a wonderful improvement and no commentary. And I'd be interested to know if there is anything worth saying on, on the contact centre, because I'm really impressed at what's happened there. Thank well, you very much. Thank, thank you, Councillor Lacey. Well, I was very pleasantly surprised that uh, the performance of the, of the contact centre has, has, you know, become so so brilliant really um you know what is people are having to work from home but i don't i'm going to ask liz actually to come in because i you know obviously that needs looking at um to analyze what has actually driv driven that in, driven that improvement because it's really important that we capture that and carry it carry it forward is liz is going to going to respond or is it going to yep. be jeff responding on this thank you liz happy to pick that up um, although Jeff may want to add, so, so uh, certainly we knew um, to, uh, towards the back end of last year that we had taken a lot of extra new new colleagues in the contact centre and there was a lot of training involved. Um, and I think we've now got to the point where everybody um, is well trained and able to respond um, to all sorts of queries. Uh, moving home has been positive for the contact centre. Um, I think uh, I took a report to scrutiny um, at the last meeting and uh, did a deep dive on some of the uh, service areas and the contact centre was one of them. Uh, I, I think some of the, the improvement in performance from home working is down to there being much fewer distractions at home um, and so people are just able to really hone in on kind of answering calls and, and queries. Um, there has been a slight that there was a, some drop in demand in the contact centre uh, but but broadly speaking, I think we're now sort of back to normal and a combination of all of those things um, has meant that performance is really good now. And uh, as with a, a classic kind of local government approach to things, Councillor De Lacey, when things go well, we just assume that you're happy and uh, we, we don't shout our own um, praises. So that's why there's no comment in the box. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, does anybody else want to comment on any of that? No, good. So yes, so it, it pleased it pleased me very much, and we've got to make sure that we uh, we cap we capture all this uh, all this excellence. Um, so I'm going to um, propose this, and I think Councillor Williams, I think you're going to second. Um, yes, I'm, I'm I'm happy to second. Okay. Uh, so we've had no questions. So I'm going through my script here. Um, members, the recommendations have been moved and seconded. The recommendation is set out at paragraph 2.1 of the agenda and cabinets recommended to review the KPI results and comments at Appendix A and progress against business plan actions at Appendix B. Um, so does, uh, do members agree with the proposal? Agree. Thank you. Does anyone wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? 
Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. Thank you. And moving on to item nine, which is the provisional general fund review and capital outturn. Um, Councillor John Williams, please would you introduce this report? Thank you, Leader. I, I'm pleased to present this uh, provisional year end position for the revenue and capital general fund. Uh, for 2019 20. This is provisional because we have yet to, uh, to have the draft statement of accounts for 2019 20 approved by external auditors. Uh, this is the first budget of the new administration, and the provisional outturn shows that South Cambridgeshire is financially healthy going into what I'm sure will be a very challenging 2020 21 financial year because of COVID 19. As to the revenue outturn, you can see from the table at paragraph three on page 40 of the agenda pack that the provisional outturn is estimated to be 19.3 million, a variance of 1.3 million on the total revenue budget. The reasons for the most significant variances are given in paragraph five on page 41 of the agenda pack. Two to note are the 0.6 million extra cost incurred by not recharging some corporate services to the HRA to better reflect actual work undertaken and the offsetting of this additional cost by a saving of nearly one million pounds in non-operational budgets where it is worth noting that investment income and expenditure was 0.6 was million above budget due to commercial rents. As to income from taxation and government grants, you will see from the table in paragraph seven on page 42 of the agenda pack that income from these sources was 5.3 million above budget. Deducting the 1.3 million overspend and taking into account the 0.6 million contribution to the reserve assumed in the budget, this gives us nearly 4.7 million to transfer to the general fund reserve bringing the total of the reserve to 16.5 million. The reasons for this are explained in paragraph eight. It is worth noting that the growth in business rate income has been substantial since the setting of the baseline, but no allowance was made in the 2019-20 budget for a, base, for a business rate surplus. This has now been rectified in the 2020-21 budget. This report also reviews our earmarked reserves, which as of uh, the 31st of March stood at over 29 million. The major reserves are explained in paragraph 11 on the agenda pack page uh, 43. One in particular, which is new to the council, is that for property investment. This reserve ensures that funds are available to meet any costs that do not fall within the responsibility of our commercial tenants and this fund will be reviewed as our commercial portfolio grows. We also have a transformation reserve of nearly 4 million. Turning to our capital fund programme, we set a capital budget for 2019-20 of over 44 million and achieved an outturn of 42 million. Of the 2 million underspend, over half a million was mainly due to Ermine Street not drawing down on loans for the purchase of properties as expected in the budget. As a result of this, this amount will be carried forward to 2021 and bring the total available for Ermine Street to over 17 million for this financial year. Also, we underspent the budget for purchasing commercial properties by 1.1 million because work on 270 Cambridge Science Park started later than expected. I'm also asking that £105,000 is transferred from unused funds in the earmark reserve to the LED street lighting replacement project to enable ornamental lights to be provided in conservation areas as requested by parish councils. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking um, the senior management team and all officers of this council for helping us to um, basically keep to our budget in very different uh, circumstances and I do congratulate them on 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 the outturn of this uh, budget. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Williams, and my thanks as well to the officers who've done, uh, done a sterling job here. Um, I believe that Councillor Hazel Smith is going to second this. Can you confirm that, Councillor Smith? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So are there any cabinet members who wish to speak on this item? No, and I believe I've got Councillor Heather Williams waiting to speak from uh, as a member. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, I'm going to put my camera off because I seem to be having issues with the broadband, but can I just confirm you can hear me OK? I, we can, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, so I've got three questions. Um, one or two relate to page 41 of the report. So it says that we have savings of 156,000 in health and wellbeing. I was just wondering if you um, could elaborate as to how those savings have been found. Under the corporate services um, line, it mentions a redundancy out of budget, but I just um, would like to know how many redundancies we've made in the last 12 months. And the final question is on page 45, paragraph 17. Um, it refers to the um, investment budget for 2021. Uh, and we and I've heard from the, the lead member for finance about the, the transition across um, from the previous year. But how much for the 2020-21 budget is there left for investment purposes as it stands at this moment, please? Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Heather Williams. Uh, Councillor Williams, can I pass those questions on to you, please? You can, uh, but unfortunately I can't answer them here and now. I don't have that information, but I'm happy to supply Councillor Williams with that with that information. OK, and we've got a, we've got a note of those questions. So Councillor Heather Williams will uh, will get back to you on those and give you a written uh, written response to them. And th that written response will appear in the minutes as well. Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, so are there any other any other questions? OK, thank you. So, uh, members, the recommendation has been moved and seconded. I'm not going to read it all out uh, because it's quite long, but it appears on page 39 and page 40. Uh, so do members agree with the proposal? Yes, agreed. Thank you. Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And moving on to item 10 at page 49, which is the 2020-21 revenue and capital budget monitoring. Uh, and Councillor Williams again, please, would you introduce this report? Thank, thank you, Leader. Um, there has just been one word to sum up the first quarter of this financial year, uh, and that word is coronavirus, of course. Overall, we have seen um, on the one hand, significant underspends due to COVID-19 disrupting day-to-day -day council activities, such as the collection of waste and the repair of council housing. Whilst on the other hand, overhead overspends as we have supported our communities in the lockdown period. In response to financial returns, the government has provided additional funding and having covered our additional costs directly attributable to COVID-19, we are expecting the losses from reduced fees and licenses to be re recompensed too. This should be sufficient to meet the financial impact on the general fund. The revenue budget summary position can be found in the table in paragraph 21 on agenda pack page 53. At the end of June, at the end of 30th of June, our net surface expenditure was 133 sorry, £131,000 under the expected spend at that point of £1,485,000. A full table is provided at Appendix B on Agenda Pack, back, pack page 61. Appendix A on Agenda Pack pages 58 to 59 shows that savings income that were expected to be achieved this financial year Income from investments is expected to be at risk from underperformance of Ermine Street, although since the writing of this report, the additional rents from further commercial acquisitions may offset this. Also, because of slippage in capital projects, some anticipated savings are likely to be delayed until 21-22. On Appendix C, 
Uh, one on the agenda pack page 63, there's the breakdown of the significant items of variance from the general from the revenue general fund. The government called upon the council to distribute the COVID-19 council tax hardship fund to those receiving local council tax support, gave business rate relief at very short notice and distributed its grant funding schemes, including the small business grant fund and retail hospitality and leisure grant fund. I'm sure you'll agree with me that the finance and newly created business support teams have performed exceptionally well in these tasks, aided by members and their local knowledge. To date, some £24 million has been distributed to around 1,900 local businesses. It's too early to make predictions for the outturn at the end of the financial year. The economy, the economic and social recovery is going to be long, and my guess is that we won't see a clear picture until at least quarter three. As to the capital programme for this year, it is summarised in Appendix D on Agenda Pack page 66. No surprises to see that COVID-19 has severely affected the start of the programme. Once again, it is too early to predict the outturn for the year. As the report says, this is being reviewed on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Williams. And I believe Councillor Toomey Hawkins is going to second this item. Can you confirm that, please? Uh, yes, Leader, I'm seconding this item. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so, and I congratulate officers on the clarity of presentation of this report. It, um, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to see at a glance what is going on, and that's very nice. Uh, so are there any cabinet members you wish to speak on this item? Uh, yes, Councillor Handley. Uh, just to really um, echo what Councillor John Williams said about the the way that the council distributed the, the the grants to local businesses, I really was really quite impressed by it, and I've been complimented um, by by the by the service they received by local businesses. So it's a thank you to the officers. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And that thanks comes from all of us. We got we got the grants out incredibly quickly. Uh, it was a it was a slick operation, but helped by members as well. Uh, when we got down to the sort of last few who were proving difficult to uh, contact, members took to the telephones themselves and wrote letters themselves to track down the last um, the last people in their own patches. And uh, that got an awful lot more money out of the door. Um, I see Councillor Peter Macdonald is indicating that he'd like to speak. Probably on this subject. Um, thank you. I'm unable to mute. You can, no, we can, I can hear you. Oh, good. OK, um, thank you, Leader. It was just a comment to thank members as well, because especially in uh, phase one of the grants, but also to some extent in, in phase two, we got a lot of support and help from members to be able to um, find the businesses that were quite hard to find at the beginning of lockdown, especially. And, and that's really appreciated by, by me and the officers. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, actually, C Councillor MacDonald, your efforts have been considerable and we are all very, very grateful to your, your efforts as well. Uh, so um, I believe Councillor Heather Williams would like to speak on this item. Thank you, Leader. Um, I've just got a question around page 61. Um, and it was touched on slightly by the lead member for finance around the investment income because obviously that there is a difference there significant difference um, and I just wanted some reassurance that it's COVID related and not any other underlying issues um, and the statement that was made read the types of investment and their performance would the lead member of finance be willing to share the um, evidence and information that led to his statement there with other members? Thank you. Uh, Councillor John Williams. Uh, thank you, Leader. Well, the, the, the evidence, I the, my statement is based on the report. So um, the, the evidence I've got there is, is the evidence I gave is actually contained within the report. But going back to the um, commercial income, um, it is explained why um, the report does explain um, that, that why why commercial income um, is slightly down on budget. And as I explained, it's due to the fact that um, 
Ermine Street has not drawn down as much of its loan as we expected uh, because it has not been purchasing properties. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams, do you want to come back on that? Thank you. So I think the answer would be that it's COVID related and not other underlying issues, which was the question that I gauged from the answer. But my um, my request was for some bit more detailed information as to the performance um, of our individual um, purchases, which I appreciate for commercial reasons may not be able to be included in this report. But I think a, a more detailed look at how certain investments are doing would be appreciated by the, them. Leader, I'm, I'm quite happy to share that information with, with uh, Councillor Williams. Obviously, it is private and confidential and, and you know, um, and she needs to not to pass that on. But um, I'm happy to. I'm sure I'm sure I can cope with that, Councillor okay. Williams. Jolly good, jolly good. So, uh, so if the two, the two Councillor Williams can make uh, contact with each other outside of this meeting, that would be appreciated. Well, Pete, okay. Pete, uh, uh, the Head of Finance, I'm sure, will supply her with the information. That's excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Are there any further questions? No? OK, so it's recommended that um, Cabinet uh, A, acknowledge the forecast for 2021 revenue outturn position against the approved revenue budget shown in Appendix C, the projected major variances with reasons for these variances and the action being taken to address the underlying issues, and B, acknowledge the latest capital programme 2021 to 2024, 25 position and variances of as variances if any as shown in appendix d do members agree with this proposal agreed 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 thank you does anybody vote wish to vote against the proposal and does anyone wish to abstain thank you so cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation and moving on to item 11 um which is the housing revenue account and uh it's councillor john williams again it's, it's, it's me again i'm sorry um I'd, um i i'm going to be quite brief on this because it's clear that um it, we we have done extremely well in the hra there we have made us um there's been a small underspend and there has been uh, a small increase in um, in income and as a result we're able to uh, put um, um, some money into into reserves um, and um, some two million in into reserves and if you look at um, um, paragraph six um, there's a table there which explains that um, and on the capital side I'm delighted actually that we've spent more money than we intended to on our new homes build program and as a result of that we're bringing forward one and a half million pounds um, to um, to ensure that we can continue with that program so I think well done to our housing colleagues particularly the new build uh, team for for delivering those homes ahead of ahead of schedule um, but I, you know, you'll see from this, it's an extremely good, um, again, um, like the general fund, the housing revenue account is in very good health and I commend it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. And I believe Councillor Hazel Smith is going to second this item. Could you just confirm yes, thank that? Thank you, Chairman. I would echo John's comments and um, congratulate the staff on a very good outturn here. Yes. Good, good out term in challenging times. Um, are there any questions from Cabinet on this item? No, and are there any questions from anybody else? No, OK, so moving on. I'm not going to read all the recommendations again because there's there's masses of them. Um, so we'll, does anybody so uh, Cabinet's requested to consider the report um, and the recommendations as set out in the paper. Uh, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Does anyone wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? No, thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees this proposal by affirmation. 
So we are now moving on to the three C's, uh, shared service partnership renewal agreements. Now there's uh, the detail here is in pink confidential papers because this is obviously all commercially sensitive information. Um, and let, if, if nobody wants to discuss anything within the pink papers, then we can stay in public session for this. Uh, but if anybody would like to discuss the content of the pink papers, then we will need to move into private session, uh, closed session. So could uh, could you please indicate if you would like debate on the information in the pink papers, please? No. OK, uh, Councillor De Lacey. I, th I think Councillor De Lacey wants to speak on the substance of the item. You ought to speak. That's 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 fine, but but not require us to go into uh, into private session. Chairman, I, I think most of what I want to say uh, concerns typos. Uh, I don't think anything relates to the real substance of the material, and therefore it might be more sensible if I simply um, send you an email with my proposals rather than uh, having to go into a closed session. That's really kind of you, Councillor Lacey. Thank you very much indeed. And if those uh, yes. Um, they would go to democratic services, but please copy me in, copy me in as well. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So um, I think um, this is Councillor Williams yet again. Yet again. Um, so over to you, John, please. All right. I, um, thank you, uh, Leader. Uh, I move um, the recommendations in uh, agenda item 30. Uh, members who were on the this council prior to uh, the election in 2018 will know that Lib Dem group was very critical of the loose nature of the agreements for our shared services and in particular the lack of a strategic direction and soft governance and the recharging of costs between partners. Um, this was therefore one of our first tasks upon taking control and I'm pleased that we are now able to deliver this partnership renewal agreement which, as you can see from paragraphs 10 and 11 on agenda pack pages 68 and 69, now puts the shared services on a more contractual arrangement with strong governance to deliver the cost efficiencies and resilience uh, that we should expect. So I would ask you to um, support the recommendations. Thank you. And I believe the recommendations are being seconded by Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Uh, yes, Leader, I am pleased to second this um, item. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now, Councillor Chamberlain, I think scrut well, I, I know scrutiny and overview have spent considerable time um, over the last um, two and a half years actually looking at our shared services. Uh, so I'm sure you'd like to comment on this. Um, I have to say, Leader, I very much welcome the report. Um, I, I think that putting the uh, agreements on a much more sound basis is exactly the way forward and I'm sure that my colleagues of the scrutiny committee will be delighted when uh, this is approved and enacted. Thank you. Thank you very much and my thanks to um, Scrutiny and Overview Committee uh, for all their contributions to this because they have played a significant role in um, shape, shaping this up into something that uh, you know we're all we're all very that we're all happy happy with and partnership working is is good stuff in this current climate um, but it has to be right and it has to be strategic and it has to have uh, you know tight legal controls over it and every member has to be an equal partner and uh, you know you've done considerable work and I'm very very grateful so if you pass on my thanks to to your committee. I'll be do so leader thank you thank you very much indeed um so um do we have any comments from cabinet no and from anybody else no okay so members you are asked to note the report thank Agreed. you very much indeed Thank you. Uh, so we've now got to the uh, the bit of the agenda where we have to go into closed session. Um, so I'll read the proper script here. We come to the point in our agenda where we need to consider whether to exclude the press and public from the meeting. This is because the next items contain information which is commercially sensitive. Members of the public are advised that if Cabinet agrees to exclude the press and public, the video stream will end. Um, so. Thank you very much um, 
for participating. So I move that the following items of business contain. Uh, leader, oh, leader, yeah, sorry. Apologize. Um, uh, uh, the Chief Exec, uh, Liz Watts, wanted to come on, uh, on this. I think it might be on the Watts. nature of the decision, actually. I'm just looking yeah, at myself. yeah, I'm really, I'm really sorry to uh, yes, hop in here, but actually, the the recommendation um, on on the previous item was, was oh. to approve the partnership renewal yeah. agreement. It was our mistake oh, in the sorry. briefing that we gave you. No, our mistake, uh, leader. So if you could, oh, okay. as, as a cabinet, page is, uh, is is to approve. Um, okay. Yes, my, my apologies. I was reading the wrong bit here. Okay, so just going back to um, the previous item, which was the three street. C's shared partnership agreement. If I just make sure I get this right. Um, so it's recommended that Cabinet approves the partnership renewal agreement for 3C shared services, brackets, ICT, building control and legal. Uh, can um, do Cabinet approve of the proposal? Uh, does anybody wish to vote against? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, somebody does. I can't quite work out whether that was an approve or <laughs> a reject. Anybody wish to abstain? No, OK, therefore the cabinet therefore agree, approves the proposal by affirmation. Sorry about the uh, interruption. It might not be the last one. But, um, this is live TV. Anything can anything can happen. So I just excuse me a second while I just find my script. Uh, so going back to uh, the recommendation for the exclusion of press and public, I move that the following items of business contain exempt information falling within paragraph three as set out on your agenda and the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. Is that seconded, please? I'll second that. Thank you very much, Councillor Van der Weyer. Um, so do Cabinet agree to the proposal? Agreed. 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 Anybody vote against? And anybody abstain? All right, so the that proposal is accepted by affirmation and we therefore move into a closed session and we say goodbye to members of the public and thank you very much for uh, participating in this meeting. I hope you found it interesting. We're just waiting for everyone to confirm. Yeah. Sorry, members, I have to shout it across the floor plate to Aaron right. to see if oh, just confirm. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so, so can you repeat that for me, Liz? I couldn't quite hear you. Yeah, we need to go into private and oh. off live stream. Apologies. Right, I can confirm that you are now no longer live. Thank you.